In this video, we're going to be showing you how to use the collage templates that come with AutoCollage. So what I'm going to do here is go into Adobe Bridge, and on my desktop, I have the sample templates that I've downloaded from the website. Now, I haven't already downloaded those templates. I did provide a link for those templates that you can download. Um, if you look at the description of the video below, you'll see that there's a link to download these templates. And then once I downloaded the templates, I have a zip file. I simply unzip the zip file, and I have a folder on my desktop called Sample Collage Templates. And within that folder, there are two additional folders. This should give you a little sampler, a little preview of the templates that come with Auto Collage. So we have our 16 by 20 templates, as well as our designer series templates. Now, uh, if we go into our designer templates, first of all these templates you can actually use with Photoshop right here right now so once you've downloaded these templates you can experiment with this and see how they work for yourself uh, before making a buying decision now you'll notice that every single template has a JPEG file and what we call a script file this is a JavaScript that uh, works with Photoshop to actually create this template now there are some significant advantages to these JavaScripts as opposed to a layered PSD file. So I want to show you how these JavaScripts work if you've never worked with them before because they're really super, super easy. Now you'll notice that each one of these templates tell you that they're a specific size. We have a 10 by 15, 10 by 20, 10 by 20, this 11 by 14, come down here 16 by 20. And really that actually doesn't mean a whole lot to you because like all of our template packages, any template will scale to whatever size we ask it to scale to. So for example, let's just use this one for example. I don't currently have a document open in Photoshop and therefore when I create this template, simply double click on the on the script file, the JSX file here. I simply double click on that file and instantly Photoshop goes to work if you look over here in your layers palette, building all of the individual layers for this particular template. And this particular template has lots of individual layers of little design elements. Once it's finished building, it's going to ask me, do I want to insert images into the template? For now, I'm just going to show you, no, I don't want to. Now, when we come up here to image and choose image size, you'll see that this layout is 11 by 14 at 250 resolution. And the reason for that is because this is how big the template was originally designed. Now, if I were to go into Photoshop and create a new document, so let's say I'm going to do a simple, let's do something really different, 24 by 24 at 300 resolution. So now instead of uh, a vertical orientated 11 by 14, we're going to do a square 24 by 24. I'm going to select the exact same template, but this time because I have a document open, Photoshop is smart enough to rework all the image openings and all the other design elements in this layout to fit our new 24 by 24 page size. Again, I'm going to say no to inserting the images because I just want to demonstrate to the fact that if I come in here, set my background color to black, you can see I basically had the exact same template except now everything's formatted to fit my 24 by 24 page. So that's one neat feature of these templates is they'll automatically scale to whatever size we're doing, which is really cool. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that all of these templates are layered. This is all individual layers. So, for example, if I wanted to take a couple of the existing image openings, and I'm just using Photoshop to duplicate those existing openings because maybe I need four images, or maybe I don't need four images. Maybe I will just take one image, and I'll decide to make it bigger. And then maybe I'll just go ahead and delete this one altogether. Or maybe I'll resize this image and I'll rotate it for effect. See, so you really have no limitations on what we're doing here. Or maybe this image opening will be slightly transparent so you can see through the image. You can reorder the image layers. Whatever you want to do to modify the layout, you can modify it to the heart's content. And then once you have your modified layout, we would save this as a PSD file, which we could then populate using the auto collage utility. So let's go ahead and close this out because I want to show you just how to use the templates themselves with the built-in automation.
If you understand what autoclage does, autoclage will allow you to specify a source folder of images and a source folder of layouts that you want to populate and it will automatically populate all of those layouts. So if I had a need for example to create 20 different collage layouts for a client I could say hey I want to populate these 20 layouts with these images and autoclage would do all the work for you which is great but more often than not we want to create a collage with a few images but just one in that case we can take advantage if we're not going to modify the template we could take advantage of the built-in automation that each of our templates has so let me show you how that works so just like before we're going to double click on our template file it's going to create all the individual layers and once it completes it's going to ask us if we want to insert images so let's go ahead and let it finish building here And now that the layout has been built, it asks us do we want to insert photos into template. I'll say yes. And this is where I caution you. Because this is where most people will make the mistake. You notice what it's asking us here? Do I want to use bridge to select an image? At this point, we don't want to answer that. Because I am going to use Adobe Bridge to insert my images. But what I need to do is browse to a location of the layouts of uh, the files that I want to use and I'll use uh, maybe this nice green texture for example and then once I have my image selected in bridge then I could choose yes and then automatically Photoshop will bring that image in in this case a texture file and place it into our image opening automatically resizing it to fit appropriately which is a super handy feature and then if there are more images in the layout you notice it turns another image opening red gives us that same prompt so this time I'm gonna to switch to a different folder of images and I'm gonna go ahead and choose one and then choose uh, yes and it'll go ahead and take that image I selected in bridge and resize it for this image opening again it pauses allows me to reposition the image if I need to I go ahead and hit return and then it sees if there are more image openings which in this case there is in fact there's two more so what I'm gonna do a little bit differently here is rather than going back and forth back and forth for every single image I can actually select more than one image at a time so I'm gonna go ahead and select one image here in bridge holding down my control key or command key for you Mac folks clicking on the other image I want to use and then when I choose yes It'll take the first image I selected, drop it into our first image opening here, just like so. And then it will automatically move on to the next image and the next image opening. So I didn't actually do anything. It's smart enough to do that for us automatically. And there you have it. Great looking layout. Super simple, super easy to do. Okay. Now, we could go one more step further. This is really a Photoshop technique more than anything, and that is add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. If you're not familiar with how to do that, let me just go back here. Choose the colorize option, and as you can see, I can change the color of this texture, which is kind of a nice little feature. I'm going to boost up my saturation, and of course, you can change the color of that texture to be absolutely anything we wanted. We'll go ahead and boost that color up some more. And you can see what a great looking layout that is. And you can go on and on and on using Photoshop. But that gives you a basic understanding of how these templates work. You may have to watch the video one or two times more to get a really good firm handle on how it all works. But it really is super, super simple. Now, let's go ahead and close this out. Let's create a new blank file that is uh, let's do 24, something really good size, 24 by 36, just to show you how flexible and easy these are to work with. So let's back up a little bit here. Let's go back to our uh, sample templates. I'm going to use that same template, that same 11 by 14 template that we had used previously. And again, because we have a blank file open in Photoshop, the layout is going to be reconfigured to now fit my 24 by 36 layout 
Again, once it's built a template, it asks us if I want to insert images. Here I can choose yes, but it's the next prompt that we want to wait on. Do I want to use bridge to select an image? In this particular case, I'll choose the skip option because I don't actually want to populate that image opening at all. Or in fact, I could just hit the delete option because I don't plan on using that one at all. So if I simply hit delete, it'll go ahead and remove that image opening in its entirety, and then I can just move right on. So I'm going to come in here, go back into a different folder of images here, and let's pick one here. Let's choose this one right here, and then I'm going to choose yes to insert that image. And that really is key. Before uh, you insert your image, make sure you have it selected uh, in Adobe Bridge the way you want it first. So we'll go ahead and insert it. And then it'll move right on to the next image opening. Again, we have two. So I might just come in here and I might just go ahead and select two images. And then when I come back and say yes, it'll go ahead and populate the first image into the first opening, like so. And I can change these the, uh, the dimensions of that image as well using those transformation handles. And then because there's one more image to go, I could go ahead and drop that image in as well, like so. Now from here, I do want to show you that you can eliminate any design element we don't like. So you, you have a lot of uh, design flexibility. So maybe I want to come in here and just change my background color to something completely different. Um, you know, you could certainly do that as well. We can turn that off. Um, maybe we want to apply uh, some type of layer style. And of course, you can just use Photoshop to apply whatever layer style you want. So I'm going to do a uh, stroke here. And we'll do a white stroke. Maybe I'll do a light gray stroke. And then we'll make it maybe 30 pixels, something like that. Something we can actually see. And then maybe I even want to do a drop shadow. So we could come in here uh, and do a drop shadow as well if we want to. Whatever you want to do, you have complete uh, flexibility that way. And now we have a layer style, so I'm just going to copy that layer style and select these two and choose Paste Layer Style. Now you'll notice that this particular template, it might be difficult to see, also has a stroke outline. So I'm actually going to click on that stroke outline and change the color to a light gray stroke. Maybe I'll do a white stroke whatever you want to do and we'll make it a little bit bigger so we can see it and you can see that there as part of the template now I could uh, come up here and you know do whatever you want to do make make things a little bit bigger so you can see you create it and now actually I'm going to duplicate that layer just for fun just because we can and just add a little visual design element there whatever you want to do you know, you've got a lot of flexibility there on what we want to do there. And there you have it. So we get just some, some extra lines there. So whatever you want to do, lots of flexibility there. So that should give you a basic understanding of how these templates work. Watch the video a couple of times if need be, but I think you'll find they're pretty flexible, pretty easy to use. And definitely check out the other video we have on AutoCollage so you can see how that functions um, when after you've modified the template and how you would go and populate it using the auto collage utility. Thanks for watching.